For a closer look at the robotics industry, we're joined now by Xiao Shan Lu. He's the founder and CEO of Perceptin, focusing on providing visual perception solutions for autonomous robots and vehicles. Thank you so much for joining us from Hong Kong. Well, thank you for having me. Well, as we know and as what we've seen and experienced, robots are already everywhere delivering food and packages used in medicine and farming. But what is on the horizon? What will robots look like 10 to 20 years from now? Well, I think that's a very interesting question. If you look back uh, in our history, the, the past three decades of uh, economy has been driven by the so-called digital economy. Uh, for example, the, the Internet industry has been the main topic of growth in the past three decades. I think we are at the very dawn of what I call the autonomy economy, uh, such as that uh, we are utilizing robots or autonomous machines to fulfill uh, functions that normally been fulfilled by humans. Uh, so I think this autonomy economy will be much, much bigger compared to the digital economy. And we are at the very beginning of it. Uh, I think what's happening today is that we see various kinds of robots fulfilling very specific functions. But if you look at the cost of building a robot, uh, it's not yet at a point that they can uh, be more affordable compared to a human being. Uh, I think scalability is still the, uh, the, the question here. Can we build one machine and fulfill many functions? Uh, for example, uh, if we use Google as an example, uh, it's a search company that you can uh, use the search technology to apply for um, uh, different kind of applications, uh, whether it's commercial, whether it's information seeking, whether it's finding people. Uh, it, so you build the engine once and you serve many customers. But at robotics today, we are not yet there. Uh, any kind of robot has to be uh, very specialized today. But once we solve uh, the scalability equation, I think we will see uh, the huge growth of the autonomy economy. Right, and at some point you've got to convince companies to invest and spend the money on all the robots. So we've heard a lot about this with AI recently. But uh, And you mentioned the piece about robots replacing humans on a large scale in the job market. But what are some of the industries where we could see this down the road? We see it a little bit with manufacturing, um, but where else could we see this? Well, everywhere, I think. Uh, today, especially in China, we are facing a aging population problem, uh, shortage of labor supply. It's not just uh, China. I think it applies to all the Asian countries, Japan, Korea as well. Um, uh, it, it's very hard to hire people in the industrial fact, uh, sectors and agriculture sectors. And many of the robots uh, uh, under demonstration in the conference, you can see they can perform very specific tasks of picking cherry or some other functions. So agriculture, industry, I think those are the beginning points. And in the service sector as well, we've see, already seen uh, delivery robots for food delivery in cities. Uh, and within a restaurant, you usually have a waiter or busboy to, to send the food uh, from the, the kitchen uh, to your table. But now, uh, in a lot of the restaurants, it's a robot that performs that task. In the past, there's been a lot of collaboration between China and the U.S., but how will tech tensions between these two major economies at the moment affect the robotics field? Any issues there? Right. I think that's another very uh, good question. If you look at the supply chain of robots, when you talk about manufacturing robots, basic components uh, of robots, battery for robots, I think China have an um, advantage on, on those areas. But if you look at the software side, computing, uh, whether it's semiconductor or pure software, I think U.S. is still leading. I think uh, uh, if these two countries can still collaborate, we can see a much faster growth rate for the robotic sector overall. Uh, but if uh, uh, the industry is impacted by geopolitical issues, then we, we see kind of separation of technologies. Then China has to catch up on uh, the software technology as well as semiconductor, whereas the U.S. has to rebuild the supply chain. Uh, for example, if you buy a battery for a robot uh, from uh, Chinese manufacturers, still much cheaper uh, compared to international suppliers. Uh, so I hope, <laughs> it's my personal hope, that uh, these two countries can still collaborate uh, to boost the growth of the robotic sector. All right, Xiao Shan Lu, thank you so much for joining us from Hong Kong. We appreciate it. Thank you so much.